In season three of NBA 2K23, we went undefeated in the wreck. And so I wanna make a video for all the teams out there that are trying to get better at NBA 2K and go to the next level. Here are five ways you can instantly get better. First off, if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to drop a like on the video and show some love, man. And I know people are going to ask D-Man, why do you not do this in Pro-Am? As of right now, Pro-Am is the wreck with custom jerseys. Honestly, when we play Pro-Am, the race quits are even worse. You don't run into any comp in Pro-Am anymore. You don't catch any league players in traffic. We play more league players in the wreck than Pro-Am. Not only that, but this is another video. Pro-Am isn't the mode that it used to be in 2K16, 17, 18, even 19. Being on top of the Pro-Am leaderboards doesn't mean anything because it tracks wins and not win percent. Honestly, if you're not signed up in Pro-Am leagues, it's no point in playing Pro-Am in my opinion. You get less VC and less rep for doing the same thing you're doing in Wreck. And so that's why we play the Wreck for the most part. So let's talk about five ways you can instantly get better and take your team to the next level. Anybody can be undefeated, but it's really up to 2K because 2K be kicking people out of games. <laughs> Those games don't count, all right? So let's go. The first thing you wanna do is know your personnel, all right? And that can be the people you play with, the bills you have on the court. If you don't know your personnel, you're probably going to struggle. And I know some people are like, D-Man, I play with randoms. How can I even take anything away from this video? Well, on 2K9, I played with randoms until my homeboy said he had 2K9. That's two people. Going into 2K10, we ran into two dogs on the court. So we sent them a message and said, yo, do y'all just want to hoop with us? That's four people. I think we need to start doing that more on 2K. Just link up and start that team, bro. I know a lot of people that aren't used to winning try to gatekeep and they try to just keep things to themselves. But I promise you, if you come across somebody that's good and they want to hoop, just send them a message. Say, yo, let's hoop and build a squad that way. That's what I did. And I haven't played with random since 2K11, bro. So once again, it's all about knowing your personnel for this first step. Um, know what bills are on the court. Know who you're hooping with. Because even then, like, we don't necessarily run meta builds. Sometimes we go out to the wreck, we have no locks at all. Sometimes we come out here, we have four guards in the center. It's all about knowing who you're playing with and knowing their capabilities. Next up is defense, defense, defense. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes defense is the reason we win games. Sometimes the offense just isn't flowing. And so we need to turn it up on defense. No matter how good your offense is flowing, if you're not clamping up and locking up, you're going to lose the game, bro. And that's just what it is. Now, when I say good defense, that doesn't mean just have a team of locks with 99 steel. Having players out there with double lockdown takeovers because we blasted teams like that too. When I say good defense, I mean, are you bumping people? Are you pinching? Are you playing the passing lane? I think no matter if you have a team or play random wreck, defense will set you apart and it will blow the game wide open. That's how you get majority of your wins in the wreck. Now, when it comes to playing in the squad, you have an advantage because you're able to call out your rotations. And I definitely recommend you learning rotation. I preach this all the time, but if a team is running pick and roll and you think only the guard and the center are supposed to defend that, you're playing bad defense because your corners have to get active too. If somebody calls out reverse or kings, you need to know what that is. And really defensive teams win, period, bro. So I could probably teach you what these rotations mean, but y'all don't believe me anyway. So I would look into somebody like Bear the Beast and watch his videos or his streams so you can really understand what's going on defensively. You don't have to go out to the wreck with the squad and run zone because we'll blast a lot of teams that think running zone is the way to go. We run man in the wreck and make it look like a zone. Some people call it a matchup zone. It's not even that, <laughs> you know? That's how good the rotations are. So defensively, make sure you're on point. If you're playing random wreck, just, I know it's tough, but just lock up, man. Lock up your person and whatever happens, happens. When it comes to offense, the next thing I want to preach is have some structure, man. Of course, I never want to tell people how to play. So I'll just say this. If you think five out is the way to go for you, run the five out and do that shit really well. If you think pick and roll is the way to go for you, run the pick and roll and do it really well. To me, what having structure is space in the floor and only cutting when you need to, shooting when you need to, and passing when you need to. I think that's the biggest thing I see when we play against randoms in the wreck. 
They're just running all over the place. It's no need for any of that. I promise you it's 100 times easier to score if you have people in the corners, you have the pick and roll, and then you have somebody standing on hash. If you wanna post up, you can have somebody post up. If you wanna cut, you can have somebody cut. But having that spacing of the floor and that structure is the number one way to get buckets easy because it just allows your point guard to make reads. Even then, people say, D-Man, how do you just stand in the corner? I, I I don't think people really watch my gameplay, bro. Because people would say, yo, if I was you, I wouldn't just stand in the corner. Bro, people that say that aren't even that nice to even talk like that. I think they probably need to be in the corner. But even then, I like standing in the corner because with the people I play with, that's going to give me about 30, 40 points a game. All right. I like getting buckets that way. I like getting buckets ISO in from the corner. I like getting buckets back door in from the corner. Pause. That's just me though. I understand everybody plays differently, but for us, that's our structure. So if you have a squad, you need to figure out yours on defense and offense. Don't run zone just because somebody on YouTube told you to run zone. Run what's better for you. Don't run five out just because you see it's working for somebody else. Run what works for you. And I don't play random wreck because I need to protect my mental. But if I did, I would probably just stand in the corner and space the floor on random rat too. Because when I watch it, people are just running around, cutting at the same time, clogging the paint. You know what I mean? So that's why I just having structure will take your game to the next level. Next up, I would have to say communication is the biggest difference between successful teams and unsuccessful teams. And that's on every level on any game. I mean, in real life or virtual, you just need communication. And I mean, real communication. Me telling Doom to just green a shot isn't real communication. Although Dooms, we, we, we do need to green shots to win, but let's be honest, that's not real communication. Real communication is calling out what I see from the corner. Real communication is our hash calling out what he sees from the corner. Real communication is Doom putting us in the best position to score the ball if he doesn't have to. And that comes on offense and defense. Once again, calling out rotations and stuff like that. That is real communication. So if I tell Doom, hey bro, my defender is playing high, I got backdoor cut, that's an easy two points. If Doom is telling our center to hold the screen because their center is in the paint, not playing any real defense, that's communication. It's always constructive and it always leads to a bucket. So say what you want, bro. Like, if you see me play with Doom live, you can call me a crybaby, but you can't call me a loser though. Hey, we gonna get that dub, you feel me? But communication is just an underrated skill to me. So yeah, I can troll Doom sometimes, but at the end of the day, Dooms is a dog, and we're gonna talk back and forth on what we want to see on the court offensively and defensively. And this also goes back to knowing your personnel. Once again, I don't really have to communicate with B and T's cause like they're dogs at 2K. The only reason I talk to Doom is because he's the point guard. So yeah, you, you probably want to communicate with your point guard a little bit, but that's the only reason. Defensively, I mean, we've been running together for so long, we don't even talk on defense that much unless we're in a hell game, all right? And that happens sometimes. But yeah, communication is an underrated skill on 2K. Um, just know how to talk to your team, know your personnel because you can't talk to everybody the same way, clearly. And so I would say that's actually a big factor. And so for this last point, I just want to bring up leaving your ego at the door because a lot of people are decent at 2K and then they form a little ego over it. I think they don't have to listen to people. <laughs> it's weird to have an ego over a video game. Like, okay, I get it. Like, I do like to score. I like to have 25, 30, 40, 50, 60. I love high scoring games, but some games, it doesn't call for that, especially when Doom is going crazy or B can score every time. Sometimes the game doesn't have to involve me at all. And I have to be okay with that. You're gonna have your games where I score 30, 40, and then I'm gonna have games where I score, I'm not gonna say like less than five points, but you know, single digits, 10, 11, 12, which is low to me. And so it's just what it is, bro. As long as we win, I'm good. And it even goes like the opposite way. Cause really the point guard, I like my point guard to be able to get a bucket. Therefore everybody focuses on him and then other people are able to score. 
And so some games, let's say my point guard Doom, they just lock in on Doom. They pinch him, blitz and doing all that nonsense, right? Or let's just say Dooms is having an off game. He doesn't have any problem saying, all right, somebody else go get a bucket. It's not my game. And I wish more people would do that. I don't know. You, you'll see a lot of egos on 2K, whether you play random wreck or actually, especially if you play random wreck. Um, you hear people on the mic, yo, bro, I ain't doing that, bro. I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. But you will see a lot of squads talk that way to each other too. Just egos all over the place. And I'm telling you, once you get rid of that ego, man, the sky's the limit. And once again, that's on 2K, that's in real life, that's in sports, that's in your work environment. The ego, it's wild. You know what I mean? An ego is a wild thing. There are some positive sides to having one, but there are a bunch of negative sides to having one also. So if you were to hoop with us, we'll tell you to leave that ego at the door. But every squad is different. So those are five ways you can instantly get better at playing the wreck. Once again, we went 91 and 0 in season three. I wanted to see if we could do it. It turns out it was easier than I thought. <laughs> but once again, it is the wreck and I understand that. I told you why I don't play program like that anymore, but it is what it is. In the comments below, if you have any tips for people, be sure to leave them in the comments. Let's help each other out. I mean, lately, People have been leaving brain dead comments, which is why I stopped checking the comments. People always say some nut shit. Oh, D man, you're setting people up with this build even though you didn't tell anybody to make the build. Oh, D man, you're just having fun on 2K. You're lying to us about how good the game is even though you never told us to buy the game. Brain dead comments, you know what I mean? But look, I'm trying to help you all out. I could lie to you like some people do, but that's not me. And if you have any doubt, you can definitely check the track record you know, old gameplay against league players, um, pro am gameplay against league players, stuff like that. I'm just trying to help you all out. So hopefully this video was able to help you all be easy. Take care. Peace.